Chapter 11.2, Areas of Trapezoids, Rhombuses, and Kites. Okay, so for the trapezoid, you want to remember that it has one pair of parallel sides. So notice right here, the little red triangles indicate that the top and bottom are parallel. And the parallel sides of the trapezoid are called the bases. All right, and the height of a trapezoid is the perpendicular distance between those two bases. So the height has to make a right angle with the base. And of course, it makes a right angle with the one on top as well because the bases are parallel. Now for the kite and the rhombus, you want to remember that the diagonals just connect the vertices or points. Okay, when, remember when you draw a diagonal, you can't trace over one of the sides. So if you just draw in the points for say a kite or any quadrilateral, and you just connect those points without tracing over one of the sides, those are called diagonals. Okay, same thing for the rhombus. Okay, so theorem 11.4, for the area of a trapezoid, it is one half the product of the height and the sum of the lengths of the bases. Let's take a look. All right, so here we have a trapezoid. Notice the little red triangles once again, indicating which sides are parallel. Those sides are called bases. So we can see we labeled, uh, they labeled the bases B1 and B2. So those are the bases, and the height is the distance between those two bases, so H is the height. Notice it makes a right angle with the base, and it also makes a right angle with the one on top if you want to draw that in. But the area for the trapezoid, it's one half times the height times the sum of the two bases. Okay, so you can definitely write it like this, but the way I like to write it is to say that the area is going to be B1 plus B2 divided by 2, and that whole thing is times H. Okay, that's really the same thing because dividing by 2 is the same as multiplying by half. And the reason I like to write it like this, you don't have to, but the reason I like to do it is because I remember it easier by thinking of this part of the equation as the average of the basis. Okay, so how do you find the average of two numbers? Well, you just add them and divide by two. So really the formula is very similar to the rectangle and parallelogram area formula in the sense that it's basically base times height. But since a trapezoid has two different bases, you need to take the average of the bases and multiply it by the height. So these are the same thing, same equation, just written differently. Example one, the free throw lane on an international basketball court is shaped like a trapezoid. Find the area of the free throw lane. Okay, so it's pretty easy. Here's the free throw lane. Um, they said it's shaped like a trapezoid. So I guess we can assume that the top right here is parallel to the bottom right here. And remember the parallel sides are the bases. So we can let one of the bases, one of the bases we can just call B1. And the other base we can just call it B2. All right, so those are the bases. And of course, the distance between those bases is the height H. So remember, I like to think of the formula for the area of a... For the area of a trapezoid, I take the average of the two bases, so B1 plus B2 divided by 2, and that whole thing is times H. All right. So you can put parentheses around this if you like, 
but really the it's times h, so the h is in the numerator. B1 plus B2, that's going to be 3.6 plus 6, and that's in the numerator. And the numerator is divided by 2, and that is multiplied by the height h, which is 5.8. You can use the calculator, see if I can do this manually. 3 plus 6 is 9, so it's 9.6 divided by 2, and that's times 5.8. Excuse this interruption, Coach. All right, 9.6 is divided by 2, that's going to be 4.8, and that's times 5.8. And now I'm going to go to the calculator. And I get 27.84. Okay, the units were in meters. So right here we did meters times meters, and that's going to be meters squared. Remember the area units get squared. Now, if I were to do this on the calculator... I would either need to put parentheses around this part, 3.6 plus 6, or you can do 3.6 plus 6, hit equals, divided by 2, hit equals, and then times 5.8. Okay, you don't want to confuse the calculator. So the formula for the area of a rhombus and the area of a kite is the same. All right, so I'm going to do these both at the same time. The area for the rhombus is one-half the product of its diagonals. All right, that's for the rhombus. And then for the kite, same thing. The area for the kite is one-half the product of its diagonals. So let's take a look. Okay, so here we have a rhombus. Remember, the rhombus has all four sides congruent. Okay, so they mark the sides congruent. And the length of the diagonals are labeled D1 and D2. All right, so this distance right here from top to bottom, that is D1, and this distance right here from left to right, that is D2. So those are the diagonal lengths. All right, D1 and D2 are the diagonals, and the formula for the area is very simple. It is just one half of the product. So you take one half times D1 times D2, and that's your area for the rhombus. Another way you can write it, if you like, all right, multiplying by one half is the same as dividing by two. So you can write D1 times D2 divided by two. All right, so that's basically, that is the same thing, same formula. All right, and right here we have the kite. Okay, so this area formula, same as the rhombus, it is for the kite. Okay, and just like the rhombus, we have the distance from left to right, they called it D2, and the distance from top to bottom, they called that D1. And it's the same formula, half of the two diagonals. So once again, if you would prefer... You can write the area formula as D1 times D2 divided by 2. Same thing as the rhombus. Example 2, rhombus PQRS represents one of the inlays on the guitar in the photo. Find the area of the inlay. All right, so I guess the inlay is um, this part of the guitar. They just expanded the image. But anyhow, this is our rhombus right here. We're looking to find the area. Notice once again, all the sides are congruent, but that's how our rhombus is. And now, we, you see we have our diagonals. They only gave us this piece or half of the diagonal, that's nine millimeters. And they gave us this piece of the diagonal, that's 12 millimeters. But there's a property for the um, diagonals of a rhombus, which I will show you. 
If you recall, when we went over the properties for a rhombus, if you see number seven right here, the diagonals are perpendicular. And that's not the one I'm looking for, actually. What I'm looking for is number five, the diagonals bisect each other. Okay, that's for a rhombus. The diagonals cut each other in half. They bisect each other. Now, while we're at it, we might as well look at the one for the kite as well. Okay, the diagonals are perpendicular. They make a right angle with each other. And um, the main diagonal is the perpendicular bisector of the cross diagonal. So if you look at the image of the kite, there's going to be a right angle right here for the diagonals. But this diagonal is cut in half. So this piece equals this piece. I should say this segment equals this segment. So that's for the kite. So one diagonal is bisected for the kite, but we said for the rhombus, the diagonals bisect each other. All right, so it's actually pretty easy. If this segment is nine, then this segment right here is also going to be nine. And if this segment is 12, then this segment right here is also going to be 12. All right, so we said the area for the rhombus is just one half times D1 times D2. And that's gonna be one half. And we can call either diagonal D1. I'll call the up down diagonal D1. So that's just gonna be nine plus nine. And D2 is going to be the other one. That's just going to be 12 plus 12. All right, pretty simple. One half and nine plus nine is 18. 12 plus 12 is 24. Okay, you can go to the calculator at this point, but I know that half of 18 is just nine and then if i do nine times 24 that's going to be 180 plus 36 that's going to be 216. all right the units were in millimeters and we did millimeters times millimeters so it's going to be millimeters squared for the final units and let me check nine times 24 yes that's correct it equals 216. So that's it, pretty simple. Okay, we're looking to find the area of the figure. Please try number one, and that's pretty easy. I can see it's a trapezoid, so use that formula. Okay, just looking at this one here, I can see the average of the two bases. It's gonna be between six and eight, so the average is gonna be seven. But anyhow, I'll write everything out, all right? They didn't indicate it, but oh yeah, they put the right angle, so we know these lines are parallel. All right, remember when two, when two side lanes make a right angle with another side, that those sides are parallel to each other. Okay, since they both make right angles with this side, then they're going to be parallel. That's how we know it's a trapezoid. Anyhow, adding the bases, the parallel sides are the bases, so six and eight are gonna be B1 and B2. And the bases are divided by two. And that whole thing is times the height H. The distance between these two bases is right here. So the four is going to be H. All right, six plus eight is 14 divided by two, that's seven. And that's multiplied by 4. And of course, 7 times 4 is 28. The units were in feet. And when we did feet times feet, we wound up with feet squared. All right, please try number 2. And I'll give you a hint. The area for the kite, it's 1 half D1 times D2. All right, this one's pretty easy. We have our one half 
And I will call the up down diagonal D1. So that's going to equal six. And I will call the right left diagonal D2. So D2 is going to be 14. So in place of D2. Now, if you want to do this without a calculator, try to look for an even number to multiply by one half. We got lucky. Both of these numbers are even. So we can choose either one. And I know that half of 14 is just 7. Okay, so 1 half times 14. And then 6 times 7, of course, is just 42. And the units were in inches. So that's inches squared because we did inches times inches. Okay, please pause and try number three. And remember the area for the rhombus is one half D1 times D2 and the diagonals bisect each other. Okay, so here we have the diagonals, but this distance is only this part of the diagonal, that's 30. Since the diagonals bisect each other or cut each other in half, if this is 30, then this right here is also 30. All right, same with the other diagonal. The half of the diagonal is just 40. And since the diagonals bisect each other, if this is 40, this is also going to be 40. All right, so we have one half. And this diagonal here is going to be 40 plus 40. And I need more room. I'm going to work down here instead. So again, we have one half for the area. And the first diagonal, left, right, is going to be 40 plus 40. And the next diagonal, up, down, is going to be 30 plus 30. Okay, so that equals one half. 40 plus 40 is 80. And 30 plus 30 is 60. Okay, these are both even. We can multiply either one times a half. So I'm going to do half of 80 and say that's 40. Okay, 40 times 60. Well, let's see. 4 times 6 is 24. And then just add the two zeros. So 2,400. You can use the calculator, but this one, this one was easy. And the units were in meters. So D1 times D2, meters times meters, that's meters squared. 2,400 meters squared. Example three, one diagonal of a kite is twice as long as the other diagonal. The area of the kite is 72.25 square inches. What are the lengths of the diagonals? Okay, they did a diagram for this, but you don't even have to do that. I'll go to the diagram later, but let's write an equation or two based on the write-up. It says one diagonal of a kite is twice as long as the other diagonal. So I'm going to let that one diagonal equal D1. And that is twice as long as the other diagonal. So it's going to be 2 times D2. All right, so we have the equation for the diagonals already. Now, if we were to write an area formula... Or we already have the area formula. This is for a kite. Okay, that we know that the area for a kite is one half D1 times D2. Okay, and they gave us the area in the problem. They said the area is 72.25 square inches. So in place of A, the area, I'm going to plug in 72.25. And that's going to equal one half. And D1 is 2 times D2. So what I'm going to do here is just plug it in. 
Okay, in place of D1, D1 is 2 times D2. So in place of D1, I'm going to plug in 2 times D2. All right. And that is multiplied times D2. All right. Interesting setup here. Let's see. All right. I don't want to erase the answer, so I'm going to erase this for now. All right, so we have 72.25. And here we have 1 half times 2 times D2 times D2. Well, 1 half times 2 is just 1, so that cancels. All right, bring down the equal sign. 1 half times 2, you can write 1 if you want. You don't have to. But anyhow, D2 times D2 is going to be d2 squared all right actually i'm going to erase the one at this point all right so let me erase this so if this is d2 squared how do we undo something squared what's the opposite well you just take the square root so you want to take the square root on both sides okay the square root of d2 squared is just d2 and the square root of 72.25, that is just 8.5. So that's D2. And using what we said in the beginning, D1 is 2 times D2. Okay, so if D1 is 2 times D2, that's just 2 times 8.5. And, of course, that equals 17. So just check the units. The units for the area were in inches squared, square inches. But when we took the square root, it just becomes regular inches. So the units are in inches, 8.5 inches and 17 inches. And we can see that is answer C right here. All right, so we wrote the relationship between the diagonals. We plugged in the formula for the area and the area itself. And then we had to take the square root of both sides and plug in for the last diagonal. So notice in their diagram, they let one diagonal equal x and the other diagonal equal 2x. Basically the same thing I did. But they just said um, D1 equals X and D2 equals 2X since it was twice as much. Basically the same thing. All right, please try guided practice number four. The area is 80 and one diagonal is four times as long as the other one. Find the diagonals. All right, so it says one diagonal is four times as long as the other. So I'm going to let that one diagonal equal D1. And that's going to be four times as long as the other. So that's going to be four times D2. Now let's go to the area. This is a kite. So the area we know is one half D1 times D2. All right, we want to take this and plug it in. So our area is, actually we can plug in for the area as well, okay? It's right in the problem, it says the area is 80 square feet. So in place of the area A, I'm going to plug in 80 and that equals one half. D1 is going to be four times D2. So in place of D1, I'm going to write 4 times D2. And D2 is just D2. All right, let's see. We have 80. We have the equals. 1 half of 4 is just 2 because 4 divided by 2 is 2. 
D2 times D2 is going to give us D2 squared. Solving for D2, the opposite of times 2 is divided by 2. All right. So 80 divided by 2 is 40. And we have the equal sign. And of course, the 2's cancel. And that equals D2 squared. What's the opposite of squaring something? Well, taking the square root. So you have to do that to both sides. And it's going to be D2 equals the square root of 40. Now, they should have said if they wanted simplest radical form or rounding off. I think rounding off is more appropriate. So on the calculator, I'm just going to do square root of 40, and I get 6.324. And if I were to round off to one decimal, if I look at the second decimal, if it's less than five, you round it down. So I am going to say that D2 is approximately 6.3. And the units were square feet. So the final units, we took the square root of square feet, and that undoes the square part. So it's just 6.3 feet. All right. And really, you shouldn't plug in, when you plug in for D1, you shouldn't use the part where you round it off. You should use the part before you rounded it off. All right, so for D1, that's going to be 4 times D2. So that's going to be 4 times D2, which we said was radical 40. And now on the calculator, if I do 4 times radical 40, I get 25.298. All right, and if you look at the second decimal, if it's five or more, you round it up. So the 25.2 for D1 is going to equal 25.3. Okay, these squiggly lines in place of the equal sign means we round it off. And again, the units are in feet.